Hey, welcome back to the Metropolitan Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's currently the 23rd of April, and we're in the casual lobby agent techie on that, trying out a new deck of sorts. So this is actually a Severnius combo deck, and I got this from Dean. Um, Dean dropped by our stream on Saturday and threw a list at me. This is a slightly different version, so we're trying it out. Our opponent said that they're pretty new to the game, so unfortunately we're going to maybe combo them out, but... We'll see how this goes. So this hand, I'll explain what we're doing in a second, but this hand is not too bad. Magnum turn one, uh, Astrolabe turn one is pretty good. Uh, we could aggressively mulligan for the key pieces, like we kind of want Theophilus bag better, but I think we can keep this. Just Astrolabe turn one is probably going to do as well. So Severnia Stim Implants is an Anarch card that came out in the last cycle, and it says you throw out cards basically in multi-access R&D or HQ. So we're playing Game Day, and we're playing Theophis with Bagbiter with Magnum Opus and a lot of other money cards to basically draw our entire deck. Once we have our entire deck, we're going to run R&D and probably see about 15, 17 cards. That's usually game winning, especially with freedom through equality. So that's the game plan. Um, Dean's list, by the way, if you don't know Dean, this is Dean Tran from Toronto. He's a world-class Netrunner player. He's been in the top 16 worlds a couple years in a row now. I think but um yeah it, the version that we I actually played this at a game night kit just yesterday it had the from heat breakers which actually has pretty good synergy when you're discarding your entire deck uh, but we're going for some more standard breakers and instead playing some more reliability when it comes to things like hostage uh, so let's see how this goes here so really we want to kind of just draw up into our uh, bag biter or our hostage to get that out uh, diesel's good in theory, I think this turn we'd rather set up Astrolabe just because they're more than likely to install a new uh, card in a new server. Uh, we also have Bookmark to lower our hand size, so game day gets a bit better, but it, this deck is actually like kind of difficult to play, which I was surprised. It seemed pretty one-dimensional, but it was actually kind of cool. So if we put down Astrolabe, um, I think we can afford to draw once, right? Yeah, okay, so we can put down Astrolabe. We don't want to discard as many cards as we can, so now we put down Bookmark. We've used our Kate ability, and that's why you always install the one that costs money before you install the one that doesn't cost money. We might get some free draw with the Astrolabe. Getting turn one Astrolabe is kind of the best you can ask for. And then at that point, we'll just diesel up. I don't think, and that's the problem with this deck and most combo decks, I don't think we're going to interact with the Corp besides maybe this just one run. Which is probably pretty bad Netrunner, but this is kind of just as a goof to see if this thing will work. And so far I've played test decks with the... I played a lot of games, well a couple games at least, with the other version and it does definitely work. So the cool thing about Bookmark is that we can drop, like we can diesel aggressively and then just like spend two clicks putting six cards on here. Admittedly if they do play that best defense we're in a really 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 bad spot, but what can they do? Uh, I mean what can we do? So let's see if this goes off. So... Our good turn is uh, put down Severnia Stim Implants. Then we have a mass install to install like three types of breakers. And then we play Freedom of the Quality, and then we make one run on R&D. We also have Hyper Driver, so sometimes that turn can have a bunch more clicks in it, which is pretty good, especially against HB, right? Because you can uh, run through Byroids. You could also considering throwing out 10 cards and running HQ before you run R&D. They are a newer player, so I don't know what server one is. Could be basically anything. Could even be an agenda. Um... So that's a game day, that's pretty good. If we diesel again, we can store a bunch of cards on here. Uh, Leprechaun's pretty good. The thing is, like, we could stop down Magnum and take money, but as soon as you put Theophilus Bag Butter down, you lose all your credits. So we basically want to keep a small hand size. Find our hostage. No good yet. So we're going to host a bunch of cards on here. I think we're going to throw out. No, we're good, actually. So host three cards from your grip face down. So we'll put on here one game day. We don't need that now. One game day. We don't need that now. One game day. We'll host three more cards. I think Jinteki.net is actually going to fall apart in some ways, because once we draft four, like 37 cards, our hand's going to be unmanageable. So we don't need this, we don't need this, we want this. I don't think we're actually going to use Caddy in this game. I think this deck version now doesn't need Caddy as much as it once did. But that's kind of the idea, <laughs> which is going to be pretty funny. I think if they do res a, an Adonis campaign, we'll, we will slot down Magnum Opus and trash it. We can't let them have it. And no idea what that is. Could If they're a newer player, like they might be playing with the limited just the core set. So that could actually be something like a melange campaign. It's just really hard to get a read on newer players since uh, a lot of game theory ideas just don't work. Because uh, you can't expect what their optimal move is. Because they generally don't know what their optimal move is. And that's very interesting. There's actually like a pretty big edge when you play weird stuff or you're new enough to the game. So that's a hyper driver. That's cool. We'll strap that down just to get like a turn drawing. Uh, this is not like a diaper deck where you need this for the combo turn. In theory, this is actually just to help you set up, which is pretty pleasant. That's Assembly Lions. Um, they should, in theory, pop that on our turn, as far as I'm concerned, just so they get a click from their ETF on our turn. They might pop it now just for, like, efficiency to set up. Uh, we'll see. 
Um, there are some counters to this deck. Like, I'm hoping this deck isn't actually that, that, that great because these sort of combo decks are admittedly a bit degenerate. And this is also, like, totally not my playstyle at all. I just kind of wanted to try this, uh, Scumler Dean. Um, but yeah, defensive upgrades are an issue. And we're packing one Councilman, so hopefully we'll do it. We can ask if they want to use their assembly lines first, but we really don't care, right? Peace in our times is awesome, but we don't want to play this until we get our, um, Bagbiter up. Uh, just because we lose all our money. So in theory, we put Bagbiter up, and then next turn we piece in our times away. Uh, we can put this down. We probably want to get our Magnum down now, and the fact that we have Leprechaun, we probably should install this for one. We can also host a uh, self-modifying code on here. I think that's worth the click, just so that we can use this for uh, on their turn. We can pay... Oops. Uh, we can pay uh, like the two credits to get uh, three extra clicks on our turn. That's always really, really good. Um, we could draw one, but we had to discard. Discard, that's not that good. If we install our Hyper Driver, we actually play one for it, which isn't that great either. So in theory, we could host three cards on here, but I think we want all these cards in our hand. We just really need to find our, um... Oh, it's an Adonis, okay. So we really need to find our, uh... Our Bag Better. Because once we have our Bag Better, we basically have the whole combo, right? We just Bag Better. Once we get our Bag Better down, we just piece in our time. Next turn, piece in our time. The whole time we're Magnuming. Then we just play our game day from here, and we're basically good to go. Like, this sets up radically fast. And that's kind of the power of having a card that gives you 9 credits in one click. Like, with this and Magnum Opus, you get 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And if you have a Hyper Driver, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, you can get 21 credits in a turn. And that's kind of, like, akin to, once we play that, is draw our entire deck once we play game day, which is pretty nuts. And they're pretty ice light now, too, so R&D is easy. I guess we'll actually let them have the Donuts. It's not worth their time trashing now that they've iced it. Uh... So we could pay five credits to get our to get a magnum out, but I think we'll rather just pay four with this one. Yeah, it's probably fine. Uh, and we could, in theory, use this self-modifying code to get a hyper driver. I don't think we need to. So what do we do? I think we can draw up a bunch, right? That's good, ish. We can draw. Up. That's a hostage. So we want to set up. Uh, so we want to have low credits, and we want to get this played. So we'll install this for four, and then next turn we'll um hostage uh for our bag better and we're probably in a really good spot at that point so hostage bag better cost four so we could actually just throw out one card here uh we'll actually be short of credit uh that's eh, probably not that bad we probably want to actually want to get all these things out of our hand uh the only problem is when you use bookmark it takes all the cards from your grip so you actually flood yourself so let's just write thinking here because we actually have to plan this right so next turn if we if we magnum now next turn we have to magnum and then hostage uh Oh no, I think we might be good. We Magnum and then we Hostage uh, for Bagbiter. It puts us on zero credits. And then we Magnum once we have a hand size of two. So we'll have to throw out a bunch of this stuff. So in theory, it's probably in our best interest to put some stuff underneath the bookmark. But as soon as we pop the bookmark, we draw everything. So that's not great. Actually, we have two game days. Maybe that's acceptable. Yeah, maybe that is acceptable. So I think we're actually going to trash the self-modifying code and just install this for... No, we need the Magnum money. Okay. So we're going to throw out... Uh, doesn't really matter. I think we'll throw out this. Technically, we can use this. So next turn, I think, if we do the hand size management properly, we can Magnum, uh, Hyper Driver for Bagbiter. And mind, mind you, there's so many counters to this deck, like hard counters, like MC Informant's an issue. Tags are an issue. Best Defense is an issue. So, like, if this becomes popular, I'm not assuming it's going to. But, like, this is a very, very one-dimensional plan of attack. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, we'll Hostage for Bagbiter. After we Magnuming, so we have one click, four cards in hand. Okay, that's a defensive upgrade. That's uh, so now we have Councilman for that if they don't pre res it. They also have this just like ready and waiting, so they can always install an ice on RD before we go. And they have 20 credits and they're not doing anything with it. Um, so if they're going to Biotic out, they might be respecting self modifying code into Clot. Not something we actually have in this deck, but keeping a self modifying code up around just for the Clot threat is something you might want to consider doing. So let's see. Because the other option then... Mm, mm. Yeah, I think we'll pop this self-modifying code actually for a hyper driver. That makes our turn way easier. Yeah, that makes our turn so much easier. So we'll pay two, get a hyper driver, we'll remove it from the game. So then we have a bunch of turns, so we can magnum, magnum, uh, hostage for for Theophilus, and then magnum, 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 magnum. 
And then next turn, we'll piece in our time, Magnum, Magnum, Magnum. The next turn, piece in our time, Magnum, Magnum, Magnum. Then pull our uh, game day and probably win. Probably win. And they're not going very fast, but, like, what are we? This is going to be turn six, and I think we're maybe two, three turns away from accessing uh, at least 20 cards. So it's not too bad. Oh, fuck. Fuck. We forgot to do it. Uh, we're not going to install a program, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever. We just lose one credit. It's not the end of the world. So we can install a hyperdriver. Uh, we should have done this on your turn. On their turn, of course, but we hit the start turn. So we'll host that. Just Oh, we don't need to, but whatever. It's cute. So we'll use this. Okay. Uh, oops. We can't use this. Post. Let's install that on your... Ah, nah, fuck it, whatever. Uh, yeah, I think we can just get away with this. So, in theory, if we just magnum... Oh, no, we can't. So we have to spend all turn magnuming. Actually, this one matters. I suppose I um, meant to... All that on your turn so I can use it. Do you mind? Right? Because this wasn't there at the beginning of the turn, so we can't actually use it. You have to use it on their turn because it wasn't there at the beginning of turn trigger, from my understanding at least. So we're going to remove this from the game and then take uh, seven clicks. Thanks. Sorry if I hit the microphone. RFG. So we'll RFG this from the game and then take a bunch of clicks. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to magnum, magnum until we have four. Then we're going to hostage for Theophilus Bagbiter, losing our entire credit pool. Install him too, yes. So now we have hand size of zero, but we can make this six, and the next turn we're kind of good to go. So we're going to go magnum, magnum, magnum. And it's this is, like, it's so one-dimensional, but it actually seems pretty potent. Uh, and luckily enough, like, they're not even, uh, a lot of times if people see this sort of thing, they see Hyperdriver, they see Leprechaun, they assume it's a diaper-type deck, and then they'll stack ice on R&D. Um, Luckily, that's not happening to us. Uh, even if it does, though, I think we have enough money and we have good enough breakers that we can generally deal with it. So Dean's version had the heat breakers, which have a nice synergy. They get you a couple more accesses on R&D when you throw them out. They are expensive to use, though, and I think probably more expensive, but it also saves you clicks on installs. So it's kind of a balance. Um, his version did not have hostage and it didn't have peace in our time. So I'm not sure which one's better. Peace in our time is like super good. It basically gets you a free turn. Basically, if your whole turn is Magnum, it's a really, 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 really good turn. Um, so yeah, I think we just want to piece in our time Magnum, next turn piece in time Magnum, and then we book, use our bookmark, we game day. Mm, we're probably good. Yeah, I think we're probably good. Uh, it does get a bit more complicated, right? But I think we'll save a click if they don't ice r and We'll save a click because we don't actually have to uh, put down any breakers if they don't ice us. We'll just play Councilman, Freedom from Equality, Savernius Run. So Peace in Our Time gives us 15, it gives them 32, but looks like they're not doing much with the money anyways. And then now we can, in theory, uh, we could game day up to hand size of 15. Mind you, we'd take 6 off of this, so it doesn't look that good. So I think we'll just fire off next turn. So we have 21 now. They also, like, based on how we're doing, they might be respecting uh, Vamp. And this is the sort of deck that I guess you could slot Vamp into, uh, just because you can Vamp HQ and then don't have to worry about R&D ice or upgrades. Because um, a lot of people would expect Vamp. Um, don't know if that's worth it. The influence in this deck so far is pretty tight, but I guess we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I think next turn, yeah, we're just gonna give them the money. And if they push for a scoring, like, I just think that by the time we set up, by the time we're ready to combo off, they're not gonna have enough time just to score seven points worth of agendas. Also, if they're a new player, I feel really bad for doing this. Like, this is the sort of deck that's, uh... These sort of combo decks they play against you, like, oh, what was I meant to do? And a lot of times they can't go fast enough. Uh, these things kind of roll you over. I don't think they're good. So I played this at a GNK, the Dean's version, on Saturday, and I played against uh, IG, Industrial Genomics. There was two at the tournament, surprisingly enough. And by turn one or turn two, they put down uh, the acid that says you can't draw more than two cards a turn, which was really, really, really big of a problem. Um, so couldn't do much against that. Uh, and then they've had bioethics and I couldn't afford to trash everything, so we lost pretty fast. Then I played against a, uh, just a casual game against Remy, as he's playing Personal Evolution, and turn one puts down two uh, naked uh, remotes. I decide not to run them, like, whatever. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just let this go. I decide not to run them. Okay, this is probably overkill. Uh, so we'll install this for free. Um, so yeah, I, I decided not to run them, um, and, 
Yeah, he scores one of them. It was a House of Knives, and because he's playing P, he doesn't have damage, and he got the Severnia Stim Implants, the one of from my hand, and I conceded it immediately. You're also probably thinking, like, what happens if you want to access all R&D and there's a lot of traps in it? Like, a lot of net damage stuff, Fetal AI, Shock Snare. That's kind of a reason why Vamp seems a bit better, but that's... Oh, that was a, a trap. <laughs> that was an install uh, trap, probably uh, based off of the single advance. That's actually probably a uh, secretary. But, um... Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, how do you deal with that? This deck runs two copies of Deus Ex, so you can actually run R&D if you put those things down and not take any net damage, and that's pretty good, at least for two single bouts of net damage. And net damage is a huge issue when you're discarding your entire hand to do it. This deck also runs a levy in the same old thing, so if you want to be a bit conservative and not win in a super run, you'll still have a levy in your hand at the end of the turn. So you just levy, and then if you draw game day and you have all the magnum money, you can basically fire the combo twice. Once R&D, next turn off of H and Q, HQ if you get a good like levy reset. So that's interesting. Um, so far, not icing R&D is generally an issue again, anyways against Shaper. Like, indexing could have been really good right now. They have 40 credits, so... Ew. This is a Caprice on R&D, even if they just, like, res it. I guess we would just run it a couple times. Uh, not with Severnius, just to trash it first. But they should pre-res it if they expect Councilman, and we are definitely running a Councilman. They can also put one piece of ice on R&D, which is kind of an issue. We actually... Oh, but he just did. So, that complicates things a bit, but luckily with Hyperdriver, I think we're cool. So... Let's do the math here. They drew last click. That's not a thing you should be doing, but they said they're new at the game. Okay, so we got to think here. If we pop this, we'll have a bunch of clicks. And we now currently have one card in hand. Our hand size is 34. So if we pop this, we get 7. 7 plus 23 is 30, so we can do it. So we are going to do it. So we'll pop this. We now have... Oh. Take clicks, yes. So we have 7 clicks. All right. So we're going to pop this. And this is going to... I think this is going to just shit the bed so hard because it's going to be incredibly difficult to to read our hand um at all those good grips okay so this doesn't look like an issue right but now how the heck do we parse this garbage <laughs> like what do we do here um so we'll get a councilman down asap that's definitely important oh nice brain taping okay that's cool so i get a councilman down so now they can't res anything there uh with 33 credits we can definitely get through a single piece of ice right so that's a severnia stim implants so we can now access a lot of cards um okay hopefully this is implemented i'm actually not sure next we want to play freedom through equality that's really good uh lastly we want to uh mass install all our breakers uh let's find mass install oh god oops misclick no worries i think that's actually a fine misclick so we gotta install all our breakers in theory so that's one uh we have an mu for this yeah we do Oh, technically we should have less MU than that. Okay, so let's get that one. We get a snowball down. We'll get a pipeline down. Uh, so this is one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're fine. Um, and then the last click, we just run. We just run R&D. They can't res anything. Um, so that should be fine. And then we'll just throw out everything. Just about everything. So we'll run. We'll run R&D. So choose at least two cards. Now we're going to choose more than two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. We just don't want to throw out our levy. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's hard to tell where your levy is 12. Oh, we installed an SMC instead of a pipeline. Oh, that sucks. That's not good. Uh, 1, 13, 15, 16. We also have the can if we're throwing out an even or odd number. Yeah, that should be a pipeline. Uh, there's no sentry that ends the run, so who cares, right? Okay, yeah, we goofed. This should be a pipeline. Uh, I don't think it's going to matter. So we'll access 11 cards. Uh, with this up, that might be game winning. And then next turn, we just uh, levy. Oh, Janus. Oh, fuck. Oh, they can't res the Ash for what that's worth. Uh, no, we have clicks. No, we don't have clicks. GG. It mattered. It actually mattered. It actually, actually, actually mattered. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. We'll try this again shortly. Ciao. Oh, boy. Well.